Welcome to the explanation of the Chapter 8 test review for Algebra 1. So, as we go through the review, you'll want to make sure that you are making any changes to your best attempts at the answer key, and feel free to see me before the test if you have any questions. All right, so looking at our first set of problems, directions tell us to simplify using the properties of exponents. Be sure your answers contain positive exponents only. So in our first problem, 3n to the 6 multiplied by negative 8n to the 3rd, you want to multiply the 3 and negative 8 out in front to give us the negative 24, and then add the 6 and 3 for the powers, so we would have negative 24n to the 9th. In number 2, in parentheses, we have 5y to the 9th over z to the 4th, all to the 2nd power. So that means both top and bottom are going to that power. So 5 squared out in front is 25. y to the 9th to the second power, you need to multiply the powers. So it would be y to the 18th. And z to the 4th on the bottom, 4 times 2 would give us z to the 8th. Then in number 3, we have 32x to the 7th y over 2x to the 5th y to the 8th. So the 32 and 2 can be simplified to 16 over 1. So we'll just put the 16 on top. x to the 7th over x to the 5th. We have to subtract 7 minus 5, leaving us with x to the 2nd on top. And then y to the 1st over y to the 8th. 8 minus the 1 on top would leave us with y to the 7th on bottom. Moving down to number 4, we have n to the negative 8th over m to the negative 2. So if something's to the negative power to make it positive, we need to put it on the opposite side of the fraction. So the n to the negative 8th moves to the bottom and just becomes n to the 8th. m to the negative 2 moves to the top and is m squared. So we'd have m squared over n to the 8th. Number five, the whole thing is in parentheses to the zero power. So anything to the zero power gives us an answer of one. In six, right away I notice d to the zero power, which would be one, so I'm not even going to worry about that. What I have then is a negative seven times b to the negative third times c to the eleventh. So the b to the negative third needs to move to the bottom and become b to the third, and our numerator on top would be negative 7, c to the 11th. Then in number 7, we first have two different terms in parentheses going to powers. So I'm going to simplify those. So in parentheses, 2a to the 4th to the 3rd power would give me 8a to the 12th. Then to simplify the negative 4a to the 6 in parentheses to the second power, negative 4 squared is 16, a to the 6 squared is a to the 12th. So we end up with 8a to the 12th times 16a to the 12th. Multiply the 8 and 16 out in front for 128, and then add the powers so we have a to the 24th. In 8, the whole fraction is to the negative second power. So what we can do is flip the fraction and then just get rid of that negative power. So it's instead of 4x to the third on top, that would be on bottom, and 3y to the seventh would be on top, all to the second power. Then when we take each part to the second power, 3 squared is 9, y to the seventh squared is y to the 14th, and then on bottom, 4 squared is 16, x to the third squared is x to the six. And finally, in number nine, there's many different ways that we can start to simplify. Realize because it's a fraction times a fraction, we could get rid of this multiplication symbol and just write this whole thing as one big problem with the top and the bottom all being multiplication. So right away, though, what I notice is a 10 out in front and a 5 down here can be simplified to 2 and 1. Then 
If I write out my top, I'm left with 2 times 2, which is 4. Then we have the a to the 4th, that b, another a, and a b squared. On bottom, I'd have the 3, the a to the negative 5th, I'm moving to the top to make a to the 5th. Then we're left with b to the 6th and b. So then I can cancel this b to the 1st and that b to the 1st. And I would have 4 a to the 10th b squared over 3b to the 6th. Four thirds can't be simplified. The a is nothing to simplify with. But b to the 6th on bottom, b squared on top, would leave us with b to the 4th on bottom. So our final answer would be 4a to the 10th over 3b to the 4th. Now for numbers 10 and 11, we are graphing exponential functions, meaning our final graph is going to be a curve. And my recommendation as always is to put at least five numbers in for x to get your y values to start to graph the curve. So what I started with in this first one, y equals two to the x power, I'm going to use a zero, one, two, and negative one and negative two to put in for x. So you would do two to the zero power, which is one. So my first point would be over zero, up one. Two to the first power is two, so over one, up two. Two to the second power is four, over two, up four. Then dealing with our negatives, two to the negative first is a one half. So we'd go left one, up one half. And then two to the negative second is one fourth. So we'd go left two, up about one fourth. And then connect your dots the best you can to draw in your curve. In 11, again, we need at least five points to see the curve. So I would use a 0, 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 2. You can see I used a few extra points here. So then to properly do this, you would do 1 half to whatever power you're putting in for x, and then multiply it by 4. So you have to do the power first. Then you can see the points that we get, plot your points, and connect them to get your curve. Now moving to the back page. So numbers 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 all have to deal with scientific notation. So in 12 and 13, we're taking scientific notation, writing it in decimal form. So 4.329 times 10 to the fifth power means this decimal needs to move five spots to the right. So I'd have 432,900. In 13, 7.15 times 10 to the negative fourth means the decimal would move four spots left. So our answer would be 0 0.000715. Now in 14 and 15, we're taking a decimal and writing it in scientific notation. Remember the rule is only one number is allowed in front of the decimal point and you drop any repeated trailing zeros. So in 14, this decimal point would need to move one, two, three spots to give us 3.2. So to get back to the original, we'd have 3.2 times 10 to the negative third, because that decimal would be going left. In 15, we would have 3.621 multiplied by 10 to the seventh to get back to this original number, because we dropped four zeros, and the decimal then, on top of those four zeros, moved another three numbers in, so three and four would be seven. In 16 and 17, we're evaluating the expression and then writing it in scientific notation. So in 16, we need to multiply the numbers out in front. So six times seven gives us 42. 10 to the negative second times 10 to the negative third would be 10 to the negative fifth. So that means we're close to our final answer, but not quite there. Because for scientific notation, we can't have two digits here. It would need to be one digit in front of the decimal. 
So instead of 42, this would be 4.2, and the 10 to the negative fifth becomes 10 to the negative fourth. And as you can see, they both would end up giving us the same decimal. But this bottom one is our correct scientific notation. Then in 17, we have a division problem. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. 10 to the 8th divided by 10 to the 3rd would be 10 to the 5th. So this would be 2.5 times 10 to the 5th power. Then, moving on to our last few problems, we're looking at exponential growth or decay. So right away, first problem is depositing $1,000 into an account that pays 4.5% interest compounded yearly. Find the balance after seven years. So remember our growth formula is y equals c, and in parentheses r plus one to the t power. Now remember for R, you need the percent written as a decimal, so instead of 4.5, it'd be 0 0.045. 1,000 goes in for C, 7 goes in for T. So we'd have Y equals 1,000, then in parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.045 to the T power. So 1,000, then in parentheses, 1.045 to the 7th power. So you do 1.045 to the seventh power, then multiply it by 1,000. And what that gives us is this big long decimal surrounding that to the nearest cent would be $1,379.20. For 19, population is declining by 2% each year from 2001 to 2009. Population started at 75,000 in 2001, write the decay model, and then use the model to predict or find the population in 2009. So in this case, it's a decay model, so we have y equals c, then in parentheses, 1 minus r to the t. So our initial population, 75,000, in parentheses, 1 minus 2% as a decimal, 0.02, to the t power. So our model would be 75,000, then in parentheses 0 0.98 to the t. So if we're going for 2009, so if we're starting in 2001 and we're predicting for 2009, this right here should actually be two, not the seventh power, but it should be changed to be the eighth power. So instead of seven years, 2001 to 2009 is eight years. So that should be to the eighth power. So when we put that into our calculator, our answer is going to be 0.98 raised to the eighth power. And then you'd multiply that by 75,000 so we should get a population of approximately 63,807 people. So 63,807. Terrible writing there with the online pen, but it would not be this answer because that would only be seven years of time, which would have been 2008. So make sure you change that one. Then moving down to our last two problems. So on the last two problems, it says classify the model as growth or decay, then find the percent of increase or decrease. So in this case, all we want to look at to start is the number in the parentheses. If it's greater than one, we have growth less than one we have decay. So number 20, it's 1.15, meaning it's growth. So to find the rate, our rate is going to be figured out from taking the 1.15 and subtracting one. So our rate is 0 0.15. So then when we convert that back to a percentage, multiply that by 100. 
So 0 0.15 times 100 gives us 15%. Then in 21, we have 0 0.71. So it's less than 1, meaning it's decay. So what we want to do in this case is take 1 minus the 0 0.71, giving us 0 0.29. And then in that case, multiply that by 100, meaning our decay rate is 29%.